I'm John Harbin with the Times News, and this is your News of the Week for March 11th. 7th Avenue, once thought of as the bad part of town, has added 12 businesses in the last year and made major strides in revitalizing the area despite the Great Recession. Historic 7th Avenue District Executive Director Tara Ledbetter said her focus has switched to economic development because the district's board felt it had gotten a handle on safety and beautification over the past few years. Heavy rains created troubling driving conditions this week, as well as flooding many areas of the county. The first weekend of March was marked by a soaking two-day rain that produced widespread flooding across the mountain Sunday. A steady downpour Wednesday flooded roads and low-lying areas of the county as up to three inches of rain fell. Residents and tourists looking for banking services in Lake Lure could be out of luck come June as the last remaining bank makes plans to leave the area. Mountain First Bank closed its Lake Lure branch in February, and TD Bank, formerly known as Carolina First, will close its branch on Arcade Street in June. The Hendersonville City Council decided last week to ban LED video billboards inside the city limits. City staff had been approached by Bobby Soule, vice president and general manager of Lamar Billboards, regarding the display. By a consensus, the city council decided to not allow the bright billboards in the city. A judge Wednesday found there was probable cause to charge Travis McGraw with the murder in the death of his wife Vanessa Mintz after the prosecution said evidence from the crime scene and firearms found at McGraw's home tie him to the crime. McGraw, 44, was arrested four days after Mintz was found dead at the Saluda Mountain Lodge on February 19th. The Brevard City Council gave the green light this week to the Gardens at English Hills, a proposed $5.4 million senior citizen apartment complex. Council members took the action after hearing a presentation by several parties involved, and the request was submitted by Western Carolina Community Action. The proposal would establish a 41-unit, 21,000-square-foot apartment complex. As gas prices continue to rise, five downtown Hendersonville businesses have launched a promotion that might relieve the strain for two lucky winners. Narnia Studios owner Barbara Hughes came up with the idea of holding a raffle for two $50 gas cards for customers who shop at the five businesses between Friday and Thursday and bring their receipts into her store. The drawing for the winners will be held on Friday, March 18th. The Henderson County Animal Shelter has made great strides in reducing the number of animals euthanized each year, which officials say is a result of not only efforts of the shelter, but across the Henderson County community as well. During the past year, the number of animals euthanized at the shelter has dropped 25%. A fundraiser for the Green Six Oaks building, commonly known as Roscoe's, will be held from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday. March 12th at Camp Mondamon in Tuxedo. There will be food, music, fun for kids, and even plane rides if the weather is clear. Roscoe's burned down in a fire on Saturday, February 12th. Donations to the rebuilding effort can be made at Saturday's benefit. Money can also be deposited in an account at First Citizens Bank. For more on these headlines and other headlines, be sure to check us out at BlueRidgeNow.com, our Facebook page, and follow us on Twitter.